The Witches by Roald Dahl. The Meeting, Part 1. Now that the manager had gone, I was not particularly alarmed. What better than to be imprisoned in a room full of these splendid ladies? If I ever got to talking to them, I might even suggest that they come and do a bit of cruelty to children preventing at my school. We could certainly use them there. In they came, talking their heads off. They began milling round and choosing their seats. And there was a whole lot of stuff like, Come on and sit next to me, Millie dear. And, oh, hello, Beatrice, I haven't seen you since the last meeting. What an adorable dress you have on. I decided to stay where I was and let them get on with their meeting while I got on with my mouse training. But I watched them for a while longer through the crack in my screen, waiting for them to settle down. How many were they? I guessed about 200. The back rows filled up first. They all seemed to want to sit as far back from the platform as possible. There was a lady wearing a tiny green hat in the middle of the back row who kept scratching the nape of her neck. She couldn't leave it alone. It fascinated me the way her fingers kept scratching away at the hair on the back of her neck. Had she known somebody was watching her from behind? I'm sure she would have been embarrassed. I wondered if she had dandruff. All of a sudden, I noticed that the lady next to her was doing the same thing. And the next, and the next. The whole lot of them were doing it. They were all scratching away like mad at the hair on the back of their necks. Did they have fleas in their hair? More likely it was nits. A boy at school called Ashton had had nits in his hair last term and the matron had made him dip his whole head in turpentine. It killed the nits all right, but it nearly killed Ashton as well. Half the skin came away from his scalp. Have a look at the ladies scratching the backs of their heads. I began to be fascinated by these hair scratching ladies. It is always funny when you catch someone doing something coarse and she thinks no one is looking. Nose picking, for example, or scratching her bottom. Hair scratching is very nearly as unattractive, especially if it goes on and on. I decided it had to be nuts. Then the most astonishing thing happened. I saw one lady pushing her fingers up underneath the hair on her head and the hair, the entire head of hair, lifted upwards all in one piece and the hand slid underneath the hair and went on scratching. She was wearing a wig. She was also wearing gloves. I glanced swiftly around at the rest of the row and seeing the now seated audience, every one of them was wearing gloves. My blood turned to ice. I began to shake all over. I glanced frantically behind me for a back door to escape through. But there wasn't one.